All right, we're here for another uh, another coding interview question, and this one is still going to be a big annotation, uh, but I'm only doing one example this time because it's uh, based on recursion. And this algorithm, the fact finding the factorial of a number, is probably one if you're just getting into recursion or you've seen it before, or maybe you haven't, you will, uh, because this is this is one you're always introduced to in the beginning when you're starting to learn recursion. Okay, uh, so quick intro here. Uh, first, we're going to go over the time complexity of this algorithm. And then what I'm going to do is briefly go over recursion uh, so that you understand why it is the time complexity that it is instead of me just saying, oh, it's recursion. That's why it's this time complexity. Okay. And even if you kind of understand it or you don't understand it, hopefully this will help you out. Because um, I know that when I was in college, when I first learned that I didn't really understand it, and the people around me didn't really help because they didn't know. And I was told, you know, you might have heard the BS like, uh, oh, I don't want to understand recursion. You got to know recursion. Or it, it recursion works because it works. Or some, I don't know, BS like that. I've heard, I've heard that. Uh, and it wasn't until later on until I was introduced to activation records or the activation stack. And I was like, oh, that's why it works. The lo that's the actual logic behind recursion. Okay, so we'll get to that. I'm going to stop talking. And we're going to get into the example. OK, so let's get into the example. All right. Uh, so the first thing here is let's just go over. Uh, let's give an input number and go through uh, kind of the, the whole algorithm. We'll do something small. We're just going to do three. OK, so the first thing is we're going to say, I'm just going to say f for factorial. Or we're going to say f of 3. So we're going to so n is 3. Uh, we're going to say at three is not three is not less than zero. Three is not equal zero. So we come down here. We're going to say you return n times factorial of n times one. So we're going to call factorial again here. And this uh, factorial of n minus one factorial of three minus one is two. So now we're going to end up calling uh, factorial of two. All right, let's go through the algorithm again. Two is not less than zero. Two is not equal zero. So we get down to the return statement. At the bottom, return uh, n times factorial of n minus 1, so 2 times the factorial of 2 minus 1. So that means we're going to call factorial of 1, 2 minus 1 is 1. OK, we're going to go through it again. Uh, factorial of 1, 1 is not less than 0, 1 is not equal 0. Uh, return 1 times factorial of 1 minus 1. Well, 1 minus 1 is 0, so that means we call f of, or factorial, of zero. All right, so now we have, now n is zero. Well, n is not less than or zero is not less than zero, but zero does equal zero. So that means we return one. Okay, so there hasn't really been any computation yet, by the way, in recursion. Uh, we're going through the algorithm. We're just going through an algorithm. So I'm going to show you what the time complexity is first. Um, but so we haven't done actually computation yet. But now that we've hit the base case. You know, if n is less than 0 or if n equals 0, those are ba base cases. We hit the one of them, uh, n equals 0. So we're turning 1, right? So we turn 1 over here. And now we're going to do factorial of 1. Well, or where factorial of n equals 1. Well, uh, we have n down here. Uh, so we're going to do, it says return n times factorial of n minus 1. Well, the factor uh, n first off here is one, but we're multiplying by down here because the factorial of one minus one is zero. Well, f of zero is one. Okay. So now we're going to go back up where uh, factorial of two. Uh, well, we're going to return where n equals two here in this factorial. So we're going to return two times the factorial of 2 minus 1. Well, we know what that is. It's 1 times 1. Um, OK, so we did here uh, f of 2, or factorial of 2. That means n equals 2. We did 2. Uh, we returned 2 times the factorial of 2 minus 1. Well, n is 2, so we do 2 times. And we know what factorial of 2 minus 1 is because it's right below it. Factorial of 1 is 1 times 1 equals 1. So we do 2 times 1 equals 2. And now we come back up here. 
to say factorial of 3. Well, that means we return 3 times factorial of 3 minus 1. Well, okay, n is 3, so we do uh, 3 times that factorial of 3 minus 1, which is 2. Well, guess what? We already did that right here. All right, and that means that the answer for factorial of 3 is 6, which is correct. It is 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, and that's actually that's actually kind of how recursion works, but I'll go over a little bit more um, after this. So what does this mean for the time complexity? Because that's what we care about. Well, let's look at how many times we actually called factorial. When we did factorial of 3, we only went through it three times. This f of 0, we, so the cutoff is right there. f of 0, we didn't call factorial again. Whenever n equals 0, we got to the base case of if n equals 0, which it did. We just returned 1. We didn't end up doing return n times factorial of 0 minus 1. First off, that would be negative anyways, and so we wouldn't want that. Um, so we only called this three times, which was the input size, right? So if we did the same thing for, you know, f of 5, and then, you know, we call f of 4, factorial of 5, and factorial of 4, we would still, the cutoff would still be when we got to 0. Uh, so can you guess what the uh, time complexity of this, of this would be? Well, since... Uh, the amount of times we can go through it is based on n. That means there's a one-to-one -one proportion to the time it takes, meaning how many times we go through it, um, to the size of the input. All right. So that means that this algorithm is big O of n. Okay. So now let's go over. Um, I kind of have a decent drawing of how like you go down and then come back up, but uh, let's go over uh, recursion so you kind of get a little bit more idea of how this is exactly working and why it's big O of n. Understanding what recursion will help a little bit, All right? Okay, so I kind of already have this picture here that I want to that I want to keep here to help you understand. All right, so there's something called the activation stack, which has a bunch of activa activation records. If you understand uh, the stack data structure. Basically, you can push things onto it and then pop them off. So when you push them onto it and then pop them off, this is the uh, last in, first out, meaning you know LIFO, if you've heard of that. So let me just draw it real quick. Uh, so we say we have a basic stack like this. Okay, well, we first, what do we call first? We call it factorial of 3 because n equals 3. That's what you're starting with. So we have f of 3. So we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to push that on the stack. That's an activation record. There's a lot, there's more to the activation record that I'm not going to get into right now, but that's just what this is called. Okay, there's more to it. But um, okay, so we called it a three. And then when we get down to the return statement, uh, we'll return three times the factorial of three minus one. Okay, then we're going to call factorial of two. Okay, and we're going to push that onto the stack on the activation record or activation stack. And so this is another activation record. Okay, so then we do the same thing. We call return two times the factorial of two minus one. So that's factorial of one. So we're gonna say f of one. Okay. And then here we have factorial of zero, which we're gonna we are gonna push on here, even though we're not actually calling factorial again, but uh, but we still call it, it's still an activation record. And so and what happens is when we push this on the stack. We go through it and we say, oh, well, it hit a base case. It hit um, if n equals 0, return 1, which uh, which is, means that we're done pushing anything on the activation stack. And immediately, we're going to start popping things off. Uh, so when we pop off uh, f of 0 or factorial of 0, well, we go, we go through the algorithm here and 0 equals 0, so we return 1 which is what we did, um, which is what we did right here. We returned one, okay? So then, so then uh, that's gone. Let me get another color real quick, get black. So now that's gone. So then we have F, then we're gonna pop off F of one, um, which we already did up here. So we did F of one is one times one equals one. 
Okay, why is that? Uh, well, we're essentially saying uh, we're, we're saying return uh, one times uh, f of zero, which is which we know f of zero. We just did that. It, it's one, so we do one times one equals one, and then uh, so that means we're done here. And I kind of already did this um, f of one with the arrow to one times one equals one. So that's what we're doing, okay? And then we pop off factorial of two, and we return two times the factorial of two minus one, which uh, is already done up here. So we say two times the factorial of two minus one, which is the factorial of one, um, which we already know the answer. Uh, we just did it, and it equals one. So we say two times one equals two. All right, then we got one more to pop off the activation stack. And this is the last activation record, it's factorial of three. So uh, factorial of three is, it says right down there in the algorithm, we return three times the factorial of three minus one, which is factorial of two. So uh, just like up here, our final answer, factorial of three, with the arrow is three times the factorial of two, which is two, because we already did the computation uh, just in the, in the last pop off. And so that means our answer is six. And that means we are done. So there are four items. We pushed a total of four items onto the activation stack. Um, however, we only called, uh, we called factorial four times, right? We actually went through the algorithm four times, but recursively, we only called it three times um, because we hit the base case on factorial of zero. So the, so this is why, um, hopefully that helped you kind of first off kind of understood recursion a little bit more because that's that's how it works. Um, there's an activation stack. Uh, you put in the first, you know, whatever N is or whatever you're doing recursively, you push that onto the stack and you keep pushing until you hit a base case and then you just start popping everything off. Okay, that's that's how, that's why recursion works the way it does. All right, and then the math that kind of up here in the red ink, that's just popping things off. Um, that's what it means, all right? Um, uh, so, so that's why the, the, com the time complexity is big of N cause it's just, we're going to, um, go through, we're going to recursively call a factorial that many times. Okay. So I hope that helped. Uh, if you need any more clarification, um, I can actually do a video that goes a little bit more in depth, um, on recursion and how it actually works. Recursion doesn't work cause it's magical. There's a reason why it works. It's all logic. Okay, there it works because of the data structure, right? Uh, so if you need more help with that, let me know in the comments. Um, uh, if you have any questions or anything, leave them down below, and I will get to them as soon as I can. All right, I'll see you in the next video.